good morning students hello we spoke about primary economic activities we got introduced to what are the definitions of economic activities what does it relate to the first activity we spoke about was the occupation was hunting now primary sector the economic activities which are connected with the extraction and production of natural resources for example agriculture fishing mining falls under primary sector the first primary sector we spoke about was hunting now many people in the world practice this activity which is dependent on the forest products they collect fruits roots and tubers leaves flowers medicines plants for their livelihood they also pro these products they also collect products like gum lac honey wax rubber different types of forest products are collected now if you look at the students what happens is there are products which are related to the forest there are so many things what we get from trees itself trees are cut it's a very 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 wrong thing but there are a lot of things what we get from these trees they collect gum rubber lac honey wax different types of forest products are collected example cut is collected from monsoon forest from khair tree so every tree has its own speciality every tree has its own importance some of these products have a high demand in the market uh, take for that matter if it is uh, sandalwood tree in mysore there are a lot of sandalwood trees and plantation now if they are cut they are expensive trees if you uh, collect sandalwood powder that is called chandan it uh, a few grams of it also cost a lot so they are expensive some of them are of a great demand great economic value as well as they are high demand quality stuff this activity is carried out on a large commercial scale commercial scale means these activities are carried out on a from the business perspective this occupation is carried out in all the forest covered regions of the world now there are many famous forests which are there in the world this occupation this primary activity is carried over around the world the equatorial forests are dense and evergreen now that they are talking about equatorial forests these forests has its own importance have their own climate conditions animals plants they are also called deciduous forests or deciduous trees dense and evergreen the climate is humid and unhealthy it's not that the climate with the conditions are livable due to the disturbance of reptiles and insects collection of forest products is not done on a large scale now as i said the forests are evergreen it is a habitat for many many animals and uh, different kinds of species so when there are so many species living in these forests the collection or the cutting or the way things are done over there is not that easy and it can not be done on a large scale that's what they mean to say now let's understand what are they talking about lumbering it is defined this all is a process of lumbering it is defined as the felling of economic tree felling means cutting of economic tree why economic tree these trees when they are cut they are used every part of the uh, this tree is used it has some economic value in the forest which can be used in domestic for personal industrial and trade purpose domestic is for individual use industrial is in factories industries or commerce purpose commerce is always related to business trade something to do with the economy of the country now what are the favorable factors of lumbering what are the factors which favor these kind of forest where the trees are there and the forest is green these trees have economic value 
the presence of dense tropical forest provides ready sources of valuable timber wood furniture now when furniture is made it's made from wood so timber is the biggest reason one of the biggest reasons presence of many economic trees as i said economic trees economically viable economic trees which give money to us when we get certain products after felling of these trees after cutting these trees presence of wide market for timber products within the country now uh, in pune itself we have timber market timber market is basically now this is an example what i gave you in pune there are various markets which have the timber readily available and uh, furniture my students we have furniture yes but the wood also used for furniture is very different some furniture is made up of teak some sandalwood some other kind of furniture so different kinds of wood so the expense these uh, sometimes when you go to purchase this furniture it is expensive so it is a market what we create as consumers presence of white market for timber products within the country as i said there's a timber market in pune high demand for hardwood in foreign countries now special kind of wood hardwood there is a demand of it in these foreign countries high demand of timber as fuel now timber is used as fuel uh, not any more in villages as you all see but uh, most of them till today they use these uh, wood for burning they use it for cooking so there is a lot of usage of wood and the tree cutting is very rampant even today efficient sawmill industries to process the raw timber what is sawmill industry cutting edging giving the finishing there are certain ways of cutting those trees you can't just cut a tree and your furniture is done no there is a process raw timber means what is got from the forest So, what are the favorable factors for lumbering? The presence of dense tropical forest, which uh, provides a source of valuable timber. It's a uh, source of valuable timber. Presence of economic trees. There's a wide market for timber. High demand for hardwood in foreign countries. High demand for timber as fuel. Now, fuel also is used. So, you can imagine the amount of timber being used. efficient sawmill industry it's the process which these uh, trees or the wood go through economic importance of lumbering now the economic importance what is the importance see in the textbook you all have certain questions which are based on lumbering so when you all know the economic reasons the solutions the problems the importance you all will be able to answer the question lumbering provides foreign exchange to the export of timber to overseas countries we already learned that there is a high demand for wood in foreign countries hardwood so what happens is when you uh, export these you are earning foreign exchange so it adds to the economic value of our country it provides employment for people who are involved in lumbering and related activities now how employment opportunities are created when these timber markets are created it creates a lot of opportunity job opportunities loading and loading of these heavy duty wood timber uh, then it's like carrying over to those places who are making these uh, this furniture in certain houses or certain complexes lumbering provides raw materials like timber for timber processing industry timber is used for construction of canoes and boats now timber is also largely used for this timber serves as a source of income to government by license and permits given to timber construction now there is a lawful procedure also involved in it you need some license and some permissions or permits for the timber construction 
trees in the forest help to control soil erosion as well as serving as wind breaks in now the biggest purpose of these trees is it controls soil erosion so it serves as that and as the wind breaks it helps in soil erosion so what is i repeat what is the economic importance foreign exchange when it's sold to foreign uh, in foreign countries it has export value and it's largely exported to foreign countries because there's a demand for it there's a big demand for it it provides employment opportunities as i said loading and unloading carrying these um, teak wood or um, a timber from one place to another businesses at a very higher level it provides raw materials like timber for timber processing industries so in industries also a market is created through lumbering it is used for construction of canoe and boats very uh, significant serves as a source of income to the government by license and permits now when these governments give you license and permission then only this construction can take place so when this construction when permission is given certain amount of money is taken so it's an income to the government in the forest to control soil erosion problems of lumbering problems means now exploitation misusing collecting and cutting and using it for illegal uses or doing it illegally it causes exploitation of timber causes soil erosion it leads to the depletion of natural forest product now as rampantly as it has been happening uh, deforestation you all can imagine how the, it is largely affecting the population and climate wise climate is changing global warming everywhere things are changing temperatures are uh, at an extreme in certain places it results in the high cost of transporting forest products now lumbering basically tree they provide us fresh air there's oxygen so when you're cutting down on trees the carbon levels have to increase i mean that's a simple thing what you can relate to it results in leaching of soil deforestation can cause flooding this is a very simple common example what we've learned throughout our previous classes there is problem in high cost of foreign goods now transporting them to foreign countries this just does not require whole lot of procedure but there is a lot of cost incurred in that so that also makes a lot of difference it also leads to disappearance of wildlife the importance of lumbering we learned is that there are a lot of different it's evergreen trees which are there so what are they what is happening it's a habitat to many reptiles <coughs> sorry many reptiles and insects living out there so slowly slowly when these trees are cut what happens is it's the wildlife is disappearing so we got went through uh, what is the process of lumbering what is lumbering uh, as in process where we spoke about problem economic importance and the relevance of it so you all can solve questions based on that now what are the solution the road should be constructed around lumbering areas for easy transportation of logs there are huge logs of wood now if they have to be carried from one place to an other so if there is a proper way of transportation it can help a lot it won't hamper the uh, system or the working of a uh, area over there bush fallowing should be discouraged bush burning should be discouraged forest guards should be employed to check illegal felling and ensure planting of trees there are many uh, forests in india where these guards are placed so that illegal uh, felling does not happen and planting of new trees is there you all have seen there are many organizations which run under the pretext of planting trees 
because planting of trees is always going to help the environment as well as help us. Aforestation, that is the policy of planting of two trees in an area where one tree is cut, should be encouraged. So, for two trees, one tree is, uh, for one uh, tree which is being cut, sorry, two trees should be planted. So, now aforest, uh, aforestation is encouraged. And if it's encouraged in that manner, trees will grow and trees take a lot of time to grow. The afforestation, that is the practice of clearing the bush of bad tree and planting valuable ones to replace them should also be encouraged. Now, bushing is basically removing of those trees which are of no value. So, when you remove those, you should have a clear idea that you are going to plant one valuable tree over there. So, this should be encouraged. Now, the first one. What is equatorial evergreen forest? Now, they have given a table where the regions which have these equatorial evergreen forests. Equatorial means which are around the equator. I will show you where exactly these places are placed. Dense forest, many species in a small area, hardwood trees as we read in numbering. Accessibility is difficult as I told you all. There are dense forests. So, there are many reptiles and insects and wild animals living over there. Inhospitable climate. Climate isn't conducive. Dense forests increase inaccessibility and transportation. We read in the solution that transportation, there should be a way. Traditional methods of lumbering are carried out. Uh, insects and reptiles cause problems. It's comparatively less in demand. Presence of many species in one region is unprofitable. Now, one kind of species in one particular area is not going to give us any or we are not going to gain any profit. Now, let's understand equatorial evergreen forests. Let's get, let's get a gist of what is equatorial evergreen forest. Where in the world? Tropical rainforests are found around the equator between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Some of the countries that fall in the tropical rainforest biome include these countries are there, Brazil, Peru, Hawaii, Indonesia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Thailand, Madh Sagar, Dominic Republic of Congo. Look at this figure. The places between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn lying within the equator, uh, north and south, those areas are those equatorial uh, forests. Now, next what we are going to do is, let's understand tropical deciduous forest. This table is given. You have to know what this table speaks about. So, you need to know certain terms. Amongst all other activities going on in the forest, lumbering is one of the most important activities. According to the nature of vegetation, we divided earth into various natural regions. Now, the various natural regions are divided according to their setup, the place where they are in, the climate, the conditions. The trees in the tropical forest have hardwood. So, hardwood is an expensive wood which has a high demand, as I said, in the foreign country. These forests are evergreen and hence commercial numbering cannot be done in these forests. So, can we do any kind of uh, business? Commercial point of view, can we do anything? No. Tropical deciduous or monsoon forests are not dense. Understand that. They aren't dense. Many bushes grow at the base of these forests. So at the base there are many bushes. Since these forests are near agricultural lands and densely populated regions, they have been deforested for agricultural purpose on a large scale. In the coniferous forest, cone-like leaves they have, coniferous forest. Only one species of trees is found in one area. These trees grow tall. It's like a Christmas tree. That's why in the world the lumbering activity is mostly practiced in coniferous forest. Now there can be a question based on that. Why is lumbering practiced mostly in coniferous forest? You have the answer. Today, wood is used on a very large scale for various purposes as we've seen and we've discussed. 
Hence, the percentage of forest in the world is decreasing drastically. Children, deforestation is happening at a very, very large scale around the world. So, the results are very bad. As a result, hazards related to the environment are occurring. There are many environmental hazards which are happening. Now, what is the word deciduous mean? Let us understand what does this mean. You will have a table which you will have to solve. So, when you know the meaning of certain words, you will be able to solve it. The word deciduous means falling off or out of, out at a certain season. That explains why deciduous forest means a forest in which the leaves fall off the trees when the winter comes. So, the trees are falling off in winter. The types of trees you can find in these three regions are broadleaf deciduous trees and some of them are evergreen species. The trees are more commonly known as ash, oak, lime, beech, birch and northern arrow wood. Also found in this biome are wild flowers like oxwood, bluebells, pointed trillium and primrose as well as things such as carpet moss, tawny milk cap mushrooms and lady ferns. I mean, in general, on a very general level, most of the trees we've not heard of, but they have economic value. Look at the amount of things, the amount of um, wildflowers, the different kinds of trees which are there. We know very basic trees. So, there are a lot of trees, lot of wildflowers, which are of medicinal value, which have economic value which has beauty and aesthetics, so it has its own relevance. Now look at the location. Deciduous biomes are located in the eastern half of the United States, Canada, Europe, parts of Russia, China and Japan. Now look at this world map, you will see that there are certain sections and where these deciduous biomes are located you will get an idea of that. I hope the definition of deciduous is clear now. Now the climate in this uh, very basic information what I would like to give you. The average temperature of the forest is about 50 degrees. The average amount of rainfall is 30 to 60 inches. As the seasons change, so do the colors of the leaves of the deciduous trees. Sometimes it is um, yellow, light yellow, light green bright green. So, the color of the leaves changes. During the winter months, water is generally not available to keep the leaves of some plants alive. Now, this is the situation during winter. The leaves of some plants fall off and grow back in the spring. So, it's not that once the leaves have fallen off, they won't grow back, but it goes, it becomes seasonal. During a particular season, it's falling. During a particular season, it's growing, it's coming back. Those plants like evergreen keep their leaves during the winter, have special adaptations to stay alive. It's very natural, they stay alive. One thing that is interesting about this biome and its climate is that it has four distinct seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter. So there are four seasons. In every season, there's a cycle of uh, things and development happening, so that is of importance. As we read, in spring, the leaves of some plants fall off and they grow back in spring. So, those plants like evergreen keep and now we know, we have learned that, that during winter they have special adaptations to stay alive. It is a very natural process. The climate of these forests on an average is 50 degrees. Average amount of rainfall is 30 to 60 inches. This is basic information. Most deciduous forests have mild suburbs averaging about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now students, what all information I am giving you all, this is going to help you all solve questions related or based on that, you all can get information more nicely as you have knowledge of all what we are talking about and how is it helpful? Summer months usually begin in early June and end in late August. Winter months don't begin until December. 
look at the things how things changed how summer takes place in some other country over here summers are very different winter temperatures are fairly cool with an average temperature of a little below freezing almost all of the world's deciduous forests are located by an ocean the ocean and the wind are two big factors of why the temperature and climate change so much in this biome so which are the big reasons two big reasons the ocean and the wind they they play an important role climate is a mix of temperature and precipitation deciduous forests have almost 14 inches of rain in the winter months and more than 18 inches of rain in the summer so hope this is helpful now there's a question there could be a question why is it advantageous for deciduous trees to drop their leaves every fall during the winter months what happens during the winter months water is generally not available to keep the leaves of some plants alive water scarcity is there therefore the leaves of some plants fall off and grow back in the spring it's happening naturally trees shed their leaves and then in spring the plants grow those plants like evergreen that keep their leaves during the winter have special adaptations to stay alive now the temperature the temperate deciduous they are talking about temperate deciduous also it gets the second most amount of rainfall per year in the winter precipitation rainfall is in the form of sleet snow and hail the average rainfall is 30 to 60 inches per year the average temperature of the forest is about 50 degrees fahrenheit torrid region temperate region frigid region we know about that so now this temperate deciduous forest what is the climate there are questions related on that too now example oak tree i have taken an example of this tree because this tree is very famous The oak trees in Sherwood Forest in Great Britain are 500 years old. They can grow to a height of 150 feet. Acorns are the fruits of the oak tree. Oak tree produces lots of acorns every three four years. Squirrels like eating them, and they bury some. Seedlings grow from the buried acorns the following spring. So these trees are very famous. Another one, red maple tree. This tree grows everywhere from the organic muck of shallow fresh water swamps. It's growing from those muck areas also to the rocky quartzite slope. Look at the difference from where to where. This tree's small, numerous red flowers bloom in the early spring before the leaves come out. The leaves are three to three or five lobed, red stemmed, and vary from two to five inches long. A student, this tree is very beautiful to look at. How does it grow? And in which areas does it grow? I mean, what under what conditions does it grow? Also matters. So in this class, what we spoke about was equatorial evergreen forest, lumbering, the economic importance, the solution, the problems. How lumbering is important? How does it play? a role in the economic development the importance of it as a primary activity the trees which have been cut and what products we get the tree products what we get from these trees is varied and there are so many we discussed about those then we came down to what is the meaning of deciduous tropical forest now with the information given to you all about tropical deciduous forest temperate and temperate coniferous forest you all can solve this table and it's going to be very helpful